As far as we know, life exists only on Earth. We don't have any solid evidence to say that there is any extraterrestrial life. But as intelligent living beings, we always have the quest to find extraterrestrial life and we have been trying to do that. The first place we can look at for some life is obviously our own solar system. So in this video, let us see about the places where extraterrestrial life might exist and let us also see about some missions which we sent into space in the search for life. To search for life in our solar system, we need to start at home. Because Earth is our only example of a planet endowed with life and we can use it to understand the conditions needed to spawn life elsewhere. As we define these conditions though, we need to consider whether they are specific to life on Earth or general enough to apply anywhere. Many astrobiologists believe that in order for life to arise and survive, we must find it on a planet or moon within the habitable zone or the Goldilocks zone of a star. The habitable zone refers to the region around the star in which number 1. Liquid water can form and remain liquid. Number 2. The size of the star is important. Stars that are much longer than the sun have short lifetime. That is, it is unlikely that there would be enough time for any kind of life to develop. Number 3. There is a special zone around the stars where the temperature are right and life like us can exist there only. The reason these locations are considered more likely than say Mercury or our moon is because there is evidence that each of these worlds either had some liquid on its surface in the past or has subsurface liquid or on the surface right now. Now before we get into possible habitats that we should explore, we will get into why Mercury and Venus are inhabitable. Mercury is not considered to be a planet with life. It is too close to the sun, extremely hot and dry and has very little atmosphere. Venus is equally inhospitable, which is surprising given that it would seem to have a lot in common with Earth. They are similar in size and mass and Venus is only 28% closer to the sun than the Earth. The carbon dioxide atmosphere on Venus acts as a greenhouse gas and as a result, the surface of Venus has an average temperature of 460 degrees Celsius. Scientists believe that Venus had water at one point of time in the past, but conditions in the atmosphere caused the planet to become too hot and all the water has evaporated into space. Now coming to the most probable options for habitat. Starting off with Mars. The red planet was once awash with water, but climatic changes billions of years ago stripped that world of liquid water and most of its atmosphere. We may find fossilized remains of ancient life there and there is a possibility that some form of life still exists within the ice hidden under its ruddy surface. Mars have a pretty extreme climate with daytime temperatures reaching 20 degrees Celsius at the equator which can go as low as 153 degrees Celsius at the poles. At the equator, there are favorable temperatures according to various mission data and this is where the hope for our habitation lies. Mars is the most explored planet in our solar system other than the Earth. We have sent various missions to the planet including rovers, satellites, etc. The next possible place is on the moons of Jupiter and Saturn. Combined, the gas giants Jupiter and Saturn have almost 150 confirmed moons out of which we'll be talking about two moons on which life could be possible. Europa Europa is the smallest of the four Galilean moons of Jupiter and it's roughly 90% the size of our own moon and is home to some of the largest oceans in the solar system. Although most of this water lies under the surface, heating caused by the tidal forces of Jupiter and other large moons keeps large portions of these oceans liquid, increasing the chances of life developing there. The first hints of these oceans were provided in 1979 during visits by the Voyager spacecraft. Ganymede It is the largest moon in the solar system. 
It also seems to have a saltwater ocean beneath an ice crust. The energy from the tidal interactions between Ganymede and the other Galilean moons should not generate enough energy to keep salt water liquid on this moon. Astronomers think that the water is kept liquid by a liquid iron core inside the moon, and the insulation of this ice is hundreds of kilometers thick. It is also believed that Ganymede also has a very thin atmosphere. Now to our last habitable planet, Titan. In contrast, Saturn's largest moon Titan stands out from all the other moons in the solar system as it is not only the only moon to have a dense atmosphere but it is also the place in the solar system other than the Earth where stable bodies of liquid can be found on the surface. In many ways, Titan challenges conventional wisdom about the characteristics and the composition of the moons. Larger than the planet Mercury, Titan has more in common with Earth than any other moons. It has a seasonal climate, weather, and familiar surface features like rivers, dunes, and deltas. However, Titan's atmosphere is nitrogen and not oxygen, and the interesting seas and rivers on its surface are liquid methane and ethane, but not water. There have been many space missions for finding life out there in the solar system. So, let us discuss very two prominent missions that were attempted by humans in the past, starting off with Curiosity rover. Curiosity rover is a car-sized rover made to explore the Gale crater on Mars as part of NASA's Mars Science Laboratory mission. Curiosity was launched on November 26, 2011 from Cape Canaveral and landed on Mars on August 6, 2012. The rover's goals include an investigation of the Martian climate and geology, assessment of whether the selected field site inside Gale has ever offered environmental conditions favorable for microbial life, including investigation of the role of water and planetary habitability studies in preparation for human exploration. Curiosity is still operational and has helped us learn about a lot of things related to Mars by sending us a lot of valuable images. The next rover to Mars is the Perseverance rover which is designed much like Curiosity only and it will be carrying different scientific instruments to Mars for further exploration. The last mission we'll be talking about is the Cassini-Huygens Space Research Mission. It was a collaboration between NASA, ESA and Italian space agency ASI to send a probe to study the planet Saturn and its system, including its rings and natural satellites. The robotic spacecraft comprised both NASA's Cassini probe and ESA's Huygens lander, which landed on Saturn's largest moon, Titan. The data recorded by Huygens was first sent to Cassini and then Cassini sent it to the Earth. Huygens successfully gave us 350 images of Titan, but another 350 couldn't be received due to some issue in Cassini. When it comes to future projects, NASA is now planning to send a rotor craft called Dragonfly to Titan in 2034 for further study of this moon. There haven't been missions especially to Ganymede and Europa, but there are planned missions like Jupiter, Ganymede Orbiter and Europa Clipper. Let us now wait and see whether we find any life, be it any form, on any of these planets in our solar system. Even a trace of any microorganism of another planet would be of very high value for us in terms of understanding life. Please do like this video and subscribe to the channel bottom right hand corner and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.